verse 7. I like that verse 7. It said, rooted and built up. Last time I talked about uprooting and replanting. Rooted and built up. The word rooted means stability. Stability. And you can tell the stability of a tree or plant from how far the root has been rooted. Can I, can I say that again? The strength of a tree is dependent on the depth of the root. If you've seen tall buildings, big skyscrapers, sometimes people wonder how that house, such a building can stay up there. It's because of the depth of the foundation. If you've seen where the construction takes place, they go close to like 10, 12 stories down before they even come to the surface because of stability. Rooted, follow me here. A well-rooted person can hardly be uprooted. Am I communicating? Yes. A well-rooted, deep plant. Try it someday. I cannot put that little rose flower right there. But I have a tree beside it. As easy as it is for me to uproot this, it will not be easy for me to uproot that tree. Not because it's big, but because it's got a deeper root. A well-rooted Christian in Christ can never be moved. Doctrines can come. False teaching can come. But you will not be shaken. Because you know your foundation. Am I communicating? Yes. You know your root. And if you know your foundation, you will never be destroyed. The Bible tells me if the foundation of the righteous is destroyed, where will that righteous man stand? Are you communicating with me today? Mm -hmm. So he says, be rooted in Christ. In your being rooted, what brings your roots is the word of God. It is what builds and establishes your faith. Being rooted through the word of God. That is why we are here today. That is why I encourage you to come for Bible study, to come for Sunday service, so that you can hear. And I'm not saying you have not been reading the Bible. You, I'm sure you do. But there are some things that we come and we share and express together that will add to what you know. I want to encourage you to come as often as possible and add to what you have already known. And the Bible says that you may be established in the faith. Mm -hmm. I want your faith to increase. Amen. I pray, I desire that you grow in the knowledge of Christ, Amen. that your faith may be strong in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your faith be established. So when storm comes, you know how stable that you are and to withstand. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say this. Maybe some of you have not really faced trials, obstacles, challenges. And I've, I know people that have. And, and I know this storm, when it comes, it doesn't come the same way. And it doesn't come in the same form to everyone. I know someone who lost and the preacher, for that matter, lost the wife and lost the daughter. And I know another preacher who lost the son while they were still at the altar. And these are the preachers that have been preaching faith and preaching hold on and all that until it struck them. I know... I know, I know a preacher who, after preaching about marital strength and all that, got his marriage shattered. I mean, it's been there. But then, their faith grew stronger because they were established in the what? Faith. 
Are you still with me here? It is important that you study the word. Remember last week we talked about the report. And we said the report was, I mean, a few Sundays ago we talked about the report. The report was what we have read about the scripture, from the scripture, establishes the report. But let me move on with this. Verse 8. I'm going to be ending in verse 8 because we, I just want us to pray. Look at verse 8 very closely. Read that verse 8 for, for us from Amplified. See to it that no one carries you off as a sport or makes you or make, or make you yourselves captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism mm -hmm. and vain deceit, mm -hmm. idle fancies, mm -hmm. and plain nonsense. I like that. Following human tradition, uh -huh. men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world, just crude notions following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and, res and disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah. You know why I wanted this from Amplified? You see how long it is? Because it took time, Paul, the Amplified Bible took time to explain every word. And every of the word that was explained in Amplified was pulled from the original translation, from the Greek translation of the writing. And that's why I wanted us to say to see that again. He says, beware lest anyone cheat you. He says, let not. It started by saying, see to it. Now hold it right there. See to it. Watch this. See and sure. Be careful. Be very watchful. See to it. That no one cheats you from your position through vain philosophies. I, I, I hope, I wish you're following me closely. Oh my God. There is a position God has placed you. The devil does not want you in that position. His goal is to kick you out of that position. He tried it with Christ. And failed. His goal is to ensure that you are not there. You do not benefit from that position. The benefits that come. The reward that come. And so Paul understands this. And he brings the warning with his apostolic teaching. This is why I'm bringing, I said I'm going to put on my apostolic cap. And I want to repeat and declare the same thing that Paul declared. See to it that no one cheats you out of it. Be careful. That means you have to be watchful and careful what comes your way, what you hear, what you do, and who you give your ears to. Let me say that again. This is very important. See to it that no one cheats you. That tells me that, you know, sometimes some of us say, well, thank God, I am a beneficiary of this. Nobody's going to do this. Nobody's going to take this from me. No. So it was possible. If it was not possible, Paul would not have put it this way. He says, see to it. We're going to look at other examples because he said it to Timothy. He said it to other, um, to other churches. The church of Ephesians, he also said it to the church of Corinthians and the church of Thessalonians. He said, say do it. No one kicks you out of your position. No one cheats you out of your reward. Be watchful. Be careful. And this comes from those that you give your ear. Let me tell you, I have heard preaching on television in so many forms, in so many ways, they are reaping people off. I saw many years ago, a preacher was preaching on television with little tiny piece of cloth. Probably that cloth was this way. And he now had to cut it into a little tiny piece and said, oh, this cloth was a cloth that was washed in River Jordan. And if you can 
don't give any amount as you are led in the spirit. I will send this cloth, and whenever you pray with it, your sicknesses, your problems will be by God. And you know how many people call it in for that little tiny piece of cloth. And some will talk of sand. They will go to River Jordan and they will pick up sand and put them in little tiny bottles. Or send a donation of not less than a thousand and we will send this River Jordan sand to you. And they are scouting people. Now, these are philosophies of man. Paul was saying, don't be cheated mm -hmm. out of this. Because it is not about the clothes. Neither is it about the sand. Nor about the holy water gotten from the Black Sea or Red Sea or River Jordan. It's not about it. It's all about Christ. And they miss the direction. So important that people get cheated away. On vain teaching. And Paul is saying, be sure, beware that no one kicks you out of it. And I pray nobody will get your mind in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let this mind of yours be as it was in Christ. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 5, let this mind be. As it was in Christ. Let it be in you. Let it be in you. And also 1 Corinthians uh, 2 16 says the same thing. And we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So let this be in you. I mean, sometimes I wonder why it's so possible that people can be so gullible. Mm -hmm. They can be so vulnerable, so gullible because. Because of the desire for want, to get. And sometimes I conclude it this way. The people that are going to get, they are the people that are craving to get. Because it is only a dupe that can dupe a dupe. It's only a dupe that can dupe a dupe. Because when a dupe succeeds in a dupe, the two are trying to outsmart each other and one just gets us about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, but if you are smart and you are careful, you are sensitive, your mind will be, that just doesn't sound right to me. You will think, and because you will know that this man is telling me that my salvation or deliverance is in a piece of cloth. But it's not what the Bible tells me. This man is telling me that I can be delivered through some grains of sand. But that's not what my Bible tells me. You should be smart to know that. So when someone is shouting over the television, send a piece of cloth, listen, is Jesus there? That's what Paul is saying. Outside, not according to, look at the last line there, not according to Christ. Everything is according to man's wisdom, not according to what? Christ. Please flow with me here because this is where the mistake is made. What Paul was saying here. It's not a, he was not against philosophy. Please follow me closely. Paul was not against philosophy because he himself was a philosopher. He was a very intelligent philosopher. He knows the book. He can tell you about Plutonism. He can tell you about Socratism. So he can tell you all about that. The Bible, when you read the Bible very closely, the Bible says somewhere in chapter 17 of Acts, if you were here in the Bible study, you will know what I'm saying. In chapter 17 of Acts, Paul was arguing with the Stoics and the Epicureans, philosophers. And in his argument with the Stoics and Epicurean philosophers, 
in Athens, he was telling them about their belief. And he brought their belief and now neutralized it with Christ. What was their belief? Some of them believed in the angels and the worship of angels. Oh, I wish you are following me here. Some of these people were caught up in the worship of angels. Why? Let me, let me take us down a little bit to the, to the scripture. When he was writing this letter to Colossians, Paul did not set up the Colossian church. He didn't even preach to the Colossian church. It was his children or the spiritual children that he raised that set up the Colossian church. I want you to follow me closely. Until he visited the Colossian church as a visitor to see what his children raised, that was when he met Philemon. Because Philemon was one of the staunch members of the Colossus church. Now, while in there, he discovered that their interest was more on human worship. They were more on humanitarian and on some issues that had to deal with human issues. And they were worshiping angels in form of an occultic circle. Why? When you go to verse 18, I don't know if I, did I ask it, did, did, you, take, did you go to 18? Give me 18. Look at what he says in 18. Let no one cheat you out of your reward. Taking delight in false humility and in worship of what? Angels. And intruding into those things which the uh, uh, which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. These people were caught up in the worship of angels. The history of this, follow me, was because sometime many years, sometime in AD 61, that's what the history said. History theologians believe that in AD 61, there was a major earthquake that happened and shook the entire land. And the city of Colos was saved. Amongst all other cities that survived it, the city of Colos was saved. And they believe that what saved the city was because Angel Gabriel interceded. And so, they began to give honor to angel because in their altar with the angel, they put angel Gabriel. So they were worshiping angel Gabriel. And Paul was against this. The honor that was due to God, they were worshiping angels. So that resulted to this letter. Do not let people cheat you out of your what? Reward. Seems like this is too theoretical. I really want us to, let's, let's get this. I'm going a little deeper into theory. So let people not cheat you out of this. Because by giving credence to some concepts in the world, we miss the foundation of Christianity. Yes. Now, take me back to that verse 8 again. The 